Howdy guys, Mac with Double Tap. Uh, I'm going to do a quick video about why Glock sucks. Uh, that's a uh, prototype we're working on, pistol mag carrier. Uh, they'll be coming along. we got a lot of new prototypes out there right now. But anyway, what we're actually wanting to talk about is Glock and why they suck. Uh, Excuse me. I watched the video, uh, and there was some stuff in there that you know he these guys broke a Glock, and then they were talking about them later in another video. And uh, let's talk about, and, and you know that they were absolutely right. Uh, let's talk about this Glock and the problems I've had with it over the last 15 years. Uh, uh, well, first of all, I got to qualify this. This is not a factory mag release, and it has a Ghost three and a half pound trigger in it. This is a factory extended slide stop lever that I, I put in aftermarket, or you know, after the fact. Uh, let's look at the problems I've had with this gun over the last 15 years. Uh, I shoot no less than 2,000 rounds a month, sometimes way more. But if you look at just a basic 2,000 rounds a month over 15 years. It's about 360,000 rounds through this gun. And I'm thinking about going ahead and changing some of the springs out because, well, there's nothing wrong with them, but they got 360,000 rounds in them. And, you know, that's a problem, not knowing when your springs are going to wear out and lasting that long because you're never going to truly trust them. If you're not changing your springs out every four or 5,000 rounds, how could you possibly trust them? I mean, 360,000 rounds, hell, 361,000 rounds, and, it, and the spring might fail. You know, not having your springs fail right way before, that's, that's a problem. Uh, some of the other problems I've had with this gun is over the years, uh, while I was throwing it and all that, I mean, and training with it, I mean, you can see on the magazine well right here where the magazine well was dimpled. Because while I was training with it, and, and that particular day that that happened, I jumped onto a pile of rocks on my holster, on my uh, drop leg holster. And when I did, that rock came up. It was a very sharp point. It came up and just drilled that magazine well. And I pushed it in a little bit to the point where, you know, I had to take a pocket knife and twist it back out uh, before my magazine would just, you know, smoothly exit the fire. Uh, empty, 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 empty. You know. So, you know, I don't know if that's adequate for a release but you know I, I, I'm okay with it I guess but you know the fact that after I jumped on a pile of rocks and I put a little tweak in it I had to bend it back out again that's an issue uh, sometimes it classes when I fill it with dirt I mean I'll dump dirt down on top of it and pack it and run it slide a few times and when I clear it and I put the magazine in it and a fresh trigger and it fires and then when I try to do my normal Glock trigger reset, I actually have to press, I actually have to pull the trigger back out to make the trigger reset, you know, just because it's all packed with dirt and stuff. And the fact that dirt, you know, if you pack dirt in a gun by the handful, that'll lock the trigger up, yeah, I mean, that's a problem. Uh, what other kind of problems have I had with this gun? Uh, you know, the finish... Throw this flat gun across the concrete at every class, and you know my finish is all beat up, and it's got holster wear and stuff. And, you know, 15 years of training with a gun and beating the living piss out of it, you think it would look better than that, but it doesn't. But I'm okay with that, I guess. But again, this is you know it's a problem. You'd think the gun would hold up to it better than that. Uh, you know, some other comments that were made or. Law or Glock gives law enforcement guns. Uh, I'm a cop, or was a cop. Most of you guys know that. Uh, I'd like to know where I was that fucking week. Uh, because the fact is, you can, as a cop, you can walk into any law enforcement dealer and buy Glock, Smith & Wesson, SIG, uh, H&K, Anybody that they're a dealer set up for is a law enforcement dealer. There is a law enforcement price for any firearm. It is not free by any standards. It's about 10 to 15, maybe 20% cheaper than what retail is for your average guy on the street. Uh, 
and I, and it sucks that Glock won't give away their guns. I mean, what's it cost them to make machined precision polymer and metal? I mean, it can't cost them more than a dollar or two to make these things. I, I don't understand why they're not giving them away, assholes. But uh, anyway, you know, everybody gives their guns away uh, to law enforcement as far as price. If, if that's the standard we're going to use is give them away. Your big departments, like here in Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Stillwater, OHP, they all buy their, their officers' guns. And, you know, the guy made a com comment that your average cop doesn't train enough, and he's absolutely right. Most cops, like here in Oklahoma, most cops will train, you know, I, it used to be once a year when I was a cop. Now I think I heard that they have to qualify twice a year, and that's all the training they'll ever do with their gun, and that's a crock of shit. That does not make you a professional. It makes you less than an amateur. That makes you a joke. That does not give you anything over the bad guy. Uh, you need to take your happy ass off your chair, put down your blue wall web page, and go out and fucking train with your gun, because the first time you run into somebody that has trained to a level that they're ready to, they're going to put you in a body bag and take your ass to the house. So, with that being said, let's talk about some of the other things you know he mentioned. He mentioned that the fourth gen guns aren't as good as the third gen guns, and he's probably right. Uh, they still make and sell the third gen guns just exactly as they did before, and I don't understand why they do that. I really don't. Uh, but, you know, you can go out and buy brand new 3rd gen guns that are battle tested and, you know, why they would even make the 4th generation. You know, that interchangeable back strap to look like the M&P. I, I, I just don't understand why they would do that. Or the the reversible magazine release like the m I, I just don't get it. But, uh, anyway. Uh, other comments that were made was, you know, how Glock uses the fact that 85% of law enforcement uses Glock in their advertising and you know that pisses me off too because although I've never seen an ad where Glock says that I mean if you go on the, the fanboy web pages and uh, they all use that claim to justify why they're carrying a Glock 85% of law enforcement need blah 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 but as far as Glock actually ever making that statement I don't know that I've ever seen it I've never seen an ad that says that in fact I see a lot of Glock shooting sport ads I don't ever remember seeing that so I don't know that Glock's making that comment, but surely the fanboys, which I hate Glock fanboys as much as anybody. Uh, but, you know, those are the problems I've had with that gun. I'll tell you another problem I had with that gun. When I've been shooting all day and training real hard, <coughs> excuse me, and I limp wrist it, sometimes it'll, it's not really a jam. It'll kind of, well, it is a jam if the gun doesn't work. The bullet won't quite go in, and you got to kind of give it that extra little kick to get... You know, and if I limp wrist the gun, I don't do that every goddamn time. It pisses me off. Uh, but other than that, I can't really think of any problems I've had with this gun after 360,000 rounds. Uh, and I beat the living dog shit out of it. You know, yeah, can you beat a gun to death with a hammer? You probably can. Uh, can you uh, induce a malfunction in any firearm? Yeah, you can. Uh... Gun's a gun. The operator is the weapon. Uh, I pick up any gun on the street, and I've said in countless videos, Smith & Wesson M&P, great gun. H&K, great gun. Not H&K. Springfield XDMs, great guns. Uh, it's not about the gun. It's about the operator. It's always been about the operator. If you are looking for the magical, mythical, unjamming, unbreakable gun, you're going to be looking a long damn time, because it doesn't exist. Uh that's my opinion and that's why Glocks suck you know after 360,000 run rounds that guns barely on its feet uh, and anybody anybody that wants to bring your gun up and go side by side with this one not one that looks like it this one uh, for any number of rounds you want to go come on down standing offer to anybody any gun, any caliber, I don't care. Either. Glock 17. Last three digits on the serial number, this are 268. So, uh, you want to come down with your Smith, Sig, H&K, hadn't been invented yet, Figment, whatever gun you want to bring, 
and go round for round and see if you can keep up with me or more to the point keep up with the gun I'm an old guy I'm sure you can keep up with me but if you want to go round for round and see if you can keep up your gun can keep up with mine come on down bring your bullets uh, I'm game for that so uh, appreciate you guys watching like share and subscribe just remember you can beat the shit out of any gun and destroy it. It doesn't make one superior to the rest. You can break anything. I can pour enough sand, enough dirt, dump it in water, whatever, and induce a malfunction in any gun at any given time. How well does this work in extraordinary operating conditions is what matters to you. If you're worried about if you can get a three or a four or a five pound bag of gravel in your gun and it still operate, you're really worrying about the wrong shit. You, you really need to come back down to earth, take a step back into reality, and start worrying about things that can really happen in combat. Uh, do guns get thrown in the dirt in combat? Yes. Do they get wet? Yes. Do they get thrown in the sand? Yes. Do, but honest to God, are you really going to open the slide and pack dirt down in there? Pick it up and expect it to fire? Really? Why don't we have that same argument with Ford, Chevy, and Dodge? Well, I can't pack 12 pounds of sand in the valve spring cover and make it work. They're both machines. They have limits. Grow up. Thanks for watching.